good. He is my greatest joy. Is he your greatest joy today? A lot of good things out there, but there's nothing any better than the Lord. I found that he's just amazing in everything that he does for my life. Let's give him my hand and clap of praise. He is good. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. I wish all the men would stand up just a minute. Church, I want you to give them a hand clap of appreciation. Amen. she might have to go hungry. A mother is the one that brings up the children and they, they teach them everything that they need to know when they first get started. A mother is always there to comfort them when they're hurting. It seems like uh, when we get hurt, we want to run to mama. Mama, mama, I'm hurt. Mama, I need help. Mama, do something for me here. Some mothers are, are firemen. Some mothers are policemen. Some are teachers. Some work at McDonald's. Some sell insurance. Some cut hair. Some are nurses. Mothers do everything. Mothers are very, very, very special. I think that's when we get our first glimpse of the love of God. Unconditional love is from our mothers. I know uh, no matter what you do, you see your mama's bright, bubbly boy or, or, or your mother's beautiful daughter. And it don't matter if you got into all kinds of meanness like I did. I was still my mama's boy, okay? Well, that boy wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that meanness. Yeah, he would. <laughs> but God is good. And I thank God for mothers today. And uh, moving on just a little bit, Ray. Moving on one more. Let's just get right here. When God created a mother, and I borrowed this out of some lady. I don't really remember her name, but I borrowed it. She has to be completely washable, but she can't be made of plastic. She has to have 180 moving parts, and all of them replaceable. She has to have a kiss that will heal everything from a broken leg to a broken heart. She is able to function on black coffee and leftovers. She has to have six pair of hands. Don't you think about that now? She's got a pair of hands over here changing the diaper on the youngin'. Got another hand over here brushing little Jimmy's hair, putting a bow in Mary's hair, and getting supper ready for the husband. Mothers are always busy. She's got to have three pair of eyes. Now, she, she can watch Jessica over here and know what Brian's doing in there behind his room with the door. She's got to have that x-ray vision. But mamas have that ability. Mamas can do anything. She must be able to heal herself when she's sick. Now we're going to Matthew 20. And we're going to talk about a mother here just a minute. The mother I want to talk about today, some of you might think is not a good choice for Mother's Day. You might think, well, that's a selfish woman. Or maybe she's a self-serving woman. She's not the ideal mother that we should be talking about on Mother's Day. But I think she's a pretty cool mom myself. The mother of James and John came to Jesus with her two sons. She knelt down and started begging him to do something for her. 
Jesus asked her what she wanted. And she said, when you come into your kingdom, please let one of my sons sit at your right side and the other at your left side. Jesus answered, not one of you knows what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the cup that I must soon drink? James and John said, yes, we are. Jesus replied, you certainly will drink from my cup, but it isn't for me to say who will sit at my father's right side and at my left, that is for my father to say. We may think, wow, she had a lot of nerve. Did she think her kids was better than Matthew? Did she think they were better than Andrew? I think she was just being a mom. And we're probably going to jump on through here pretty quick, right? Now, Miss Zebedee was around Jesus almost as much as the boys were. And she realized about kingdom teaching. She knew that Jesus' kingdom was going to come. And she knew that, that James and John were part of the inner circle, the main three disciples that Jesus had. That was Peter, James, and John. And she knew that more than likely that they would have a position in the kingdom. But Jesus had said something earlier in the same chapter that we read that got her to wondering, right? She wondered that if Peter, James, and John were going to be in this position of authority because of a story that he told about a farmer that I went out to hire helpers to reap the crops. Now the Bible says that he went out early in the morning, Miriam, and he hired some people to come reap the crop. And that hours later he went out and he hired some more to reap the crop. And they agreed on what the pay would be. And he went out later and later in the day and he hired more. And he said, I will pay you what's right. And up on to the last hour of the day, he hired more laborers to come and work in the field. And they all worked in the field. Some of them worked from sunup to sundown. They worked through the heat of the day. Some of them worked three-fourths of the day. Some of them a half a day. Some of them a third of a day. Some of them just one hour. And he began to bring the people in and to pay them. And he brought the ones that come last first and he paid them. And he paid them a full day's wage. And the next one came and they got the same money and the next one and the next one. Now the ones that he hired first came. And they got the same thing. And they thought because they had worked longer, they should have got more. But he said, this is what we agreed on. So she began to think, well, maybe, just maybe, Peter, James, and John won't be first or higher up. Maybe they won't have that position. So I'm going to ask Jesus to put them one on his left side and one on his right side. Now, all the other disciples got angry when this happened. And a lot of people thought that she was being wrong. Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead, one more. There we go. She prayed that her sons would be part of the kingdom. I think that's a pretty good thing. I have two children here at church today. I have a son, and I have a daughter, and I have a daughter in Alabama, or Georgia. Now, I could say, I want Jessica to live in a $2 million house, and Brian to live in a, a $2 million house, and both of them have Mercedes, and the kids have Mercedes beamers or whatever and have a, a bank account that will never run dry 
and you know that probably wouldn't be a bad thing. But what my desire is that they will be in the kingdom, okay? That's my desire, that Jessica will be in the kingdom, that Brian will be in the kingdom, and that Melissa will be in the kingdom. Well, this is what she wanted, Ray. She wanted her children to be in the kingdom. And, and it seems like We've lost track of really what we need to do. We get so satisfied with where we're at sometimes. And we get content with coming in the door on Sunday morning, David, piling in the pew and sort of edging out for an hour, or an hour and 15 minutes, and going home. But look, guys, we need to be in the kingdom. It's God's kingdom. She wanted her children to be in the kingdom. And uh, she come again and she said, one more time, right? Probably another time. Well, let's stop right there. Being a parent sometimes is not easy, is it? Now, she come to Jesus James and John's mother. And she wanted them children not just to be in the kingdom, but to work in the kingdom. Now, if you notice my children, they work in the kingdom. And I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on what God's done. We get so content, just like I said earlier, just coming in and sitting down. But the Bible says that we've got a purpose, right? When you're saved, when you get saved, there is a purpose for your life. And it's not sitting on the pew. We come in here on Sunday morning to worship Him. That's our primary purpose. But Monday through Sunday, we have another purpose. That is to reach out to the lost and see them saved, to witness to them. And we are to occupy until he tells. So now, Miss Zabnade here wanted her children to be working. She wanted one over here and one on this side. She had great expectations, right? She wasn't going to be content that, that John was serving tables in the kingdom. She didn't want James over here taking care of the widows and the orphans in the kingdom. She wanted John over here but one side and James on the other side in positions of authority. That is what this woman really wanted. It wasn't that she just sat up close to Jesus because the person to the left of a ruler and to the right of a ruler are people in authority. And we as Christians need to get on this mindset that we need to be people of authority. We don't need to be wishy-washy. We don't need to be, you know, it's all right to have a little cabin in the corner of glory land. No, sir. I'm sorry. I don't want a cabin in the corner of glory land. I want the mansion that the Lord has prepared me. And I think it's the way our heart should be. So I do not really criticize Miss Zegude for being a little bit presumptuous. If I was James and John's mother, I would have done the same thing. Don't you want the best for your children? And the, be, the very best is to be in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? Now, where do we learn the things about God to start with? We learn from our mother, don't we? Her dad's usually too busy out working, bringing money in, bringing food in, whatever he's got to do. But now them children are with mom every day and they watch her. Mothers teach our children really how to pray. They instruct us in things of God or they instruct us in things of the world. I hope that you're a good mother and are instructing them in the ways of God. That's what God wants you to do. I'm going to pause a little bit early here today. It's Mother's Day. Now, some of us, our mothers are gone, Linda. I don't know about 
who has a mother, some of them I'm sure found, some of them are here. If your mother is gone, and she's gone on to be with the Lord, in the book of Psalms it says that the Lord himself will be your mama and your daddy. And maybe you're here this morning that maybe there's just something wrong between you and your mom. I know, I know sometimes I go through that. My mom's a live wire. Well, let me tell you, she's a live wire. And, and, and Donald Hagee, she can wire the horns off a goat sometimes. But she's my mom now. She's my mom. And when I get aggravated with my mom, and I do, I have to remember that the Lord says, she's my mom. I'm to honor her. I'm to respect her. Because when it's all said and done, she brought me into this world, didn't she? So if we've got some differences going on with our moms, and I think, Mary, we sometimes do that. We sometimes get aggravated with them. I think it's time to fix things up with them, don't you? Now this afternoon, if you get the opportunity, if your mom's still alive, go see her. I think she'd appreciate it.